the throttle system that I'm using is uh, just temporary at this stage until I can um, get the real 767 throttle system in here. It's just um, a matter of waiting till I can afford it. This is fairly practical and works and uh, covers just about everything I need. All it is is two Satec throttles put together. Uh, when I bought the yoke, the yoke comes with the throttle, I just bought a second one and put them together. However, as some of you know, the angle of the range of the throttles is meant to so that when you join them to the desk or uh, wherever you're attaching them to, you'll find that the angle was normally 90 degrees. The lever is here, you push forward on the lever, the lever stops about there. So that angle and range of motion is not really going to suit the, the system I had here. I didn't want the throttles having to be down here and then lift them up and so that this is full throttle here. So what I've had to do is tilt them so that the actual throttle system is in a V shape like this which makes the arc sit across the top so that when I get the full range it mimics the same arc that you would get in an airliner especially the 767. How I kept them in place is with wood and a little bit of metal screwed into place in, and then I just made a box uh, for them to sit in. The levers um, is just plywood and MDF. At the bottom I just cut out the hole that matches perfectly the actual lever that you get with the throttles. So then all I do is push them on sideways so that then it's just an extension of that throttle lever arm there. Same for both sides. These um, little lever handles here um, I just I got from a, um, a, a tool that um, concreters use and I actually just cut the handle in half and then just sand it out the middle here to, to give it the feel of the throttle handles. Um, these levers across here, speed brake, obviously it's just aluminium bent with some wood on it and then I screwed it to the, um, the lever. Same with the flat lever there and also the reverses. With the reverses obviously um, you need some type of switch to activate the reverses. Uh, normally the 767 has the reverses coming from the actual levers themselves out here and you'd operate them but obviously um, I don't have that. I decided to go with the two levers in the middle and put a micro switch down in here and raise a bit of aluminium up here so that when I pull back the levers like this it activates that switch. So as long as I pull back and hold it against that little tab the micro switch is activated and I've just using uh, the software FSU IPC um, when that button is pressed it's the same as pressing F2 on your keyboard so when you want to go into reverse that's it when you let it go the reverse is stop and um, I should be able to show you that how it all works um, I'll just press P I'll unpause power levers you can see push forward Back. The speed brake, um, obviously you, you probably can't see that activated, but the flat lever, this is the flat gauge here, the flat lever you'll hear the click, flaps 1, flaps 5, flaps 15, and you'll see the gauge there moving, and that goes all the way around. Forward. The reverses, as mentioned, come all the way so you'll see that when I um, when that little button is pressed, the reverse is activated, release it. So I understand that it's not perfect, but it's pretty good. 
um, and it certainly gives the feel of um, the 767 rather than just the standard SATEC throttles. Lighting is fairly important for a flight sim um, and adds that little bit extra. For me, I was lucky enough to find it's in a cold supermarket. These little beauties here. And all they are is a three LED light that I've mounted with a backing sticky plate, basically. Push it on, and the LED lights come on. They're battery operated and they last a long time. So um, uh, I could leave them on and they would last two or three days easy before they start to dim. So you, you work that out over um, a lot of sim flights um, before changing batteries. Eventually I'll hardwire it into 5 volt or 12 volt system but for now that works really well and um, there's three of them. There's one under there as well and one over that side. So that provides a bit of fluoro lighting for the main instrument panel. Up here uh, just simple push on push off overhead lights for map. So when I want to read the map lights at night. When I want to read the map, sorry. When taxiing around on the ground, uh, the aircraft has what we call a tiller on the side panel on the, most of the aircraft. The tiller is what the captain uses to steer the aircraft during the taxi and also below 80 knots on the takeoff roll. Some airlines opt to have their aircraft fitted with a second tiller for the co-pilot. More often than not, just the captain will have one on his side. Um, that way there's less maintenance costs and things like that. The captain will do all the taxiing and if the co-pilot is to fly the aircraft, generally he takes it on the roll during the takeoff phase, that sort of thing. So I'm just using a Microsoft Sidewinder joystick for my um, makeshift tiller. And I have here a handle that I've just pinched from a, um, a drill. And then I wrap that around the handle of the joystick, tighten it up so that um, the actual movement, it's the, the twist movement the rudder movement that I'm using for the tiller action. So when this is attached to that, when I move it left and right, I just get the same tiller action. It's uh, not very authentic of course, but it gives you the feel of, of using a tiller and it's, it's quite good fun. Um, I'm in the process of making um, a better tiller, a more realistic tiller for the aircraft, which I'll show you in a moment. So how this translates back into the aircraft, if I show you the panel here, that there is um, the rudder movement. If I move my joystick left and right, left and right, there you go, it shows you the rudder moving. I can also do that with the rudder pedals of course, um, but I'm going to set it up through that program FSUIPC that um, up to 80 knots on the ground, the tiller will be the most effective way of steering the aircraft. Above 80 knots, the rudder will be, uh, the pedals will be the, the most effective way of steering the aircraft. This here is the tiller that I've been working on. A little bit more realistic, looks a lot more like the tiller that you find in the 767. Simply made the, the box out of MDF, the metal bar, a, um, another bit of MDF that's been painted brown, and another bit of MDF I've used and shaped for the actual handle itself. So of course um, that moves around like so, and underneath you'll see the actual mechanism it's simply just a bolt with a couple of nuts and I've glued the nuts together so that they don't come undone 
yet tight enough for the unit to turn. So obviously this will sit inside the cockpit down there on the side like so. So then I just reach out my left hand and I'll be steering the aircraft left and right. And um, how I connect that will be once again through that interface card I showed you. And um, all I'll be doing here, once again I've got this great idea from um, Ian from the UK, is um, just attach another steel bar probably from here or maybe from back here and then have uh, what we call I think a potentiometer, if that's the correct way to pronounce that, or a 10k pot on the end and then uh, join the bolt to the 10k pot and have the wires coming off the pot so that when the the pot is connected to the, the bolt. When I turn the tiller handle, it also turns the, um, the shaft on the pot. And then once again, the wires will translate that through the uh, Leo Bodner's card. And then I'll just, um, basically all that's going to do is exactly the same as what my joystick is doing for me right now, except it looks a bit more authentic. This is a two pole, six way rotary switch that I'll be using for the overhead. Um, there are a couple of ways that you can get these to work. Um, obviously soldering uh, onto the, the contacts at the back and using each individual connection for a different switch. So if you wanted to operate six switches, you need to have six individual wires connected which would then connect to six individual spots on the card. Um, there is a way around that once again Ian from the UK has worked out how to make this into basically an encoder. Um, unfortunately my soldering technique is very poor. <laughs> I can't solder to save my life. Um, but I tried it, it does work. For me at this time I think utilising this as a proper switch is going to work better for me. But once again then all I do is drill a hole up through my overhead panel then place the switch down and screw it in through the end earth. The actual um, thread here will um, make its own thread through the wood and then um, then I can just use it as a standard switch. Buy a couple of nice knobs to match the 767, place that over the top, and bingo. This will um, take the place of things like um, the APU switch, the start switches, and uh, things like the no smoking seatbelt sign that type of thing obviously. So um, that's how that will work and um, come together very shortly.